I think this is the most requested training ever. We're gonna talk about how to hire, train, source, and actually book calls with a DM appointment setter. Let's get right into it. How do you know you need a setter? I would say that if you're making between 20 and 30K a month, that's when you actually need to hire a setter. Before it's, you need to learn the thing, right? You need to actually do the thing and you won't be able to afford one. And it's honestly because you're just not doing enough. Like that's when you hire a setter, not before. So that's how you know you do it. Now, if you are at that level, the strategy we used in the script I'm gonna show you, it's actually helped this guy, Tom Broback, close eight clients in six weeks. He's the knee guy. Just helps people fix knees, you know, fairly niche. Has like four, 5K Twitter followers, closed eight clients in six weeks, including me. So now I'm his line and he's fixing my knees, just so you know that the, this thing actually works. Now, how do you book calls? It's actually three steps. Number one, it's whale bait. That is the first step and it's very important because it is about attracting the right people, also known as whales, to your profile. Then it's volume. What are book calls via the DMs? It's so much easier to talk to people who have already acknowledged your skill. People who are following you, retweeting you, commenting under your stuff, liking your stuff. If you don't have the whale bait in place, then the people who engage, like, comment, retweet with you are not gonna be whales. And so the whole system won't work, right? We need to attract the people who are qualified then we need to dm those people and then third is we need to be good at setting those people for the call so this is the equation i'm not going to cover everything about wellbait because wellbait depends on you volume and skill depends on your setter the things that depend on you i'm going to include a video a separate video on how to actually like do wellbait right because you are the person writing your content but this presentation is going to be more about where to find those leads and what's the script but really quick, why does this actually matter? It's because this system does depend on us messaging people who follow us already. Imagining a message to people on the left, right? This was a tweet I tweeted before I realized likes and cash. Weak people think the world is against them. Strong people realize the world doesn't care who they are. Very inspirational, very cute. Also made me zero dollars, right? So imagine I message those people, probably not qualified. Whereas the people on the right, 2,300 followers, 2.5K a month client right? That's a testimonial. That's a case study. Way more relevant. The left is fish bait. The right is whale bait. You want to create whale bait so that the people who engage with you are actually whales. This happens a lot with people who go, my target market isn't on Twitter. My target market just doesn't tweet. It's like, yeah, they do. You just don't see them, right? Because you're not showing them whale bait. So that's step number one. Video in the description, check that out. That's all. Let's talk how to actually book calls. Now, volume. Talk to the people that already acknowledge you. This is so much easier. When people People already know that you're good at what you do so much easier to get them on calls which is why whale bait comes into play i would ask your setter to create a daily list this should be at least 30 people followers new followers or previous followers doesn't matter people who retweet your stuff people who come in under your stuff and people who like your stuff now you should be able to get at least 30 people on this and if you can't then what you can do is you can go to the trick below so you can look up your username go men underscore faves x let's say x is 100 right so every tweet of mine that has already got over 100 likes do it with you and then you can find those find the ones that are not fish bait but well bait so if it's a meme that went viral you don't need that if it's a platitude that went viral you don't need that go to the case studies go to the things that prove your competence and look up over the likes in the comments there's probably qualified people there one time i had a client go bro i tweeted a thread and i didn't get any booked calls and i'm like well is that all you did it's like yeah well have you tried going over the likes the comments and the retweets and talking to the people why are they interested in that stuff and booking the calls that way like when, when we post content that's only half the the work we need to actually dm the people who engage with our stuff Right, we need to DM the people who engage with their well bait. That's the whole strategy of it, right? Well bait times volume. So now we crafted whale bait content, we're attracting whales. Now we find the people who we wanna to talk to. And by the way, I recommend like crafting a list and being very specific who your target market is, right? I have like three paragraphs, I have tells, as in like, hey, if this person has this, this is probably a tell that they're qualified. Like for example, you're going for executives. If they have precedent, like head of marketing, head of operations, then that's a tell, right? That they're qualified. So craft a list of what you consider a qualified lead and make it very specific specific right the, the more specific you can make it the better because you kind of already know what a whale looks like but it's in your head you haven't like put it into text so a setter can actually see it that's important after they collect it now all that's left it's 
booking the calls, right? Actually being good at the thing. This is the, the script real here. And I'm gonna give out a few like things that we send, but those are not as important as you understanding why we are sending them. It's more important that you understand the why behind than the actual script. Because if you use the actual script, then guess what's gonna happen? Somebody's gonna take this video and they're gonna beat the script until that shit doesn't work anymore. So you wanna be able to understand the why so you can craft your own as you go. That's way more important than you copying and pasting scripts. Because in one month, they're not gonna work. First thing is the intro. And for the intro is, this is kind of where Whaleby comes into play. You wanna really position yourself as why are people even even messaging you so the way you look at this is you want to make your bio look kind of like this look kind of these shape holes right so for tom the knee guy his bio is i will help you eliminate knee pain in 12 weeks if you don't have knee pain that's just unattractive <laughs> like you're not gonna follow him ever in my bio i have if you want to grow your audience do not follow me. I can't help you, right? But if you want to monetize your audience, then you can come, right? So you want to kind of look like that in your bio. You want to be very, not only attracting the right followers, but also repelling the wrong followers, right? So you want to make it look like that so that when people, when people follow you, they have to already have passed through a certain filter. So for example, Tom gets a lot of followers that are runners or power lifters, right? Or like players, like they play volleyball or basketball or whatever. So that means that his message will be way like better. So what, what Tom sends personally is like, hey man, you're having some issues with running, right? It's like high intent. It's like, oh, actually, yeah, <laughs> I do have some issues with running, right? So you wanna kind of make it look like that, make it very specific. Problem, we gotta find the problem, but not only the problem, but the perceived problem. Because you are the expert, you're the service provider, you already know what people's problems are but they don't. It's like the person that goes like this, hey, I'm big boned. <laughs> yeah, the fuck you are, <laughs> right? No, that's not the issue here, you're not big boned. People will tell you they have a certain problem, but you as the expert know that that is not the actual problem. But you wanna understand like why, what they think the problem is like in the back of their heads. It happens a lot with me. People think that the issue is that they don't have a big following. Whereas no, the issue is you don't have any lead flow. If you had the lead flow, you'd cure it right? But you think the follower count is a problem. You want to find what, what the problem is, right? So you ask them like, hey, what's the issue with, uh, maybe he, he's a runner, right? It's like, is the pain when you squat? Is the pain when you run? Is the pain when you go side to side? Like what's going on? You want them to kind of like elaborate on what's going on. So that's the second step. That's finding the perceived problem because you already know what their problem is, but you don't know their perceived problem. And people don't make decisions on problems. They make decisions on perceived problems. They don't want to know the truth. They want to know their truth, if that makes sense. Third is gap. And when you paint the gap, you want to position yourself as the expert. And let, let me let me walk you through what I think about this. So let's say you are really good at navigating a certain cave. This is your expertise. This is your zone of genius, right? Like for me, it's like monetizing Twitter audiences. For Tom, it's knees. What is yours? You're about to go into the cave and you already have all the tools that you need. And then some dude comes in and then you see that he's going into the cave as well. And uh, you ask them, well, what tools are you bringing? It's like, oh, I'm bringing this tool. And you know that that tool won't work. What you want to do then is you want to make them realize it, but also keep a little bit of the intrigue. Maybe the guy says, yeah, I'm having some squat pain, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do X, Y, Z exercises. I'm going to bring this tool, right? So you say something like, yeah, I've seen those kind of backfire for some people. Maybe you could try something different because the cave is scary and you are the one who's already walked it. It's like, you want to lead with intrigue. You want to make them feel like they're not ready to do the thing. You know the thing. You have already done it, right? So you can guide them through not make the, the, the wrong decision they were about to make. As entrepreneurs and as salespeople, we're trying to put ourselves at the same level as a prospect. But in reality, they follow you. You don't follow them. So let's get that straight, right? You want you want to lead them, right? You want to lead with intrigue as in like, those tools are not the best. I know the thing, you don't, right? That's how you want to go on the next step. And the last thing, it's, it's because, right? So after you say something like, hey, you might want to try something that's different, that might not be the best route. Maybe that plan is not the best for you. What you want to do then is you want to make them book the call right there. And I learned this from, from Cialdini. So there, there was this uh, Robert Cialdini, right, from his book. So on the photocopier line, they tested two asks in order to get to the front of the line. One ask was, can I skip the line? And then like some people complied, some people didn't. 
but the compliance rate really increased when they went hey can i skip the line because i need to make some copies and it's just of course you're gonna make some copies you're in the copier line but giving them a reason because was way easier to skip the line when you mentioned that they might not have the right tools for the job that's when you go why don't we talk next week right or would you be open to a chat next week and then you send the link but you just don't send the link you give them a reason why we do have found that it increased the booking rate and it decreased the ghosting rate this is the entire script and i'm, I'm going to give you an analogy so you can really understand like kind of how this works so you can every time you try to book calls i like you to imagine this thing so you're about to enter into a cave you're the expert you know what to do inside that cave so you're bringing all your tools with you right but then as you're walking towards the cave you find someone who's behind you and you're like you're gonna get into that cave oh well now you go to the second step well what tools are you bringing right let me sh uh, show them to me and they show you all their shitty tools and you're like if i were you i don't know if i would do that but I do have some tools over there if you want to check them out. And they're like, oh yeah, show them to me. Mind going now because I'm going to go into the cave in a few seconds? Oh, sure. That's how you book the call. So imagine yourself like that. You're the guide and somebody's following you. They show you and you're like, oh man, that's not going to work, right? And then you help them. That's kind of the, the analogy I use when, when training the setters to book the calls. It's the scary cave. You're the expert. They're the noob. Calls equals well bait times volume times skill. If you don't have any well bait, you're not going to have anybody who's qualified to engage with. So volume is going to suffer. Now, if you have the whale bait, you have the skill, but you don't have the volume, then you're not going to send any DMs. You're not going to book any calls. It's just not going to work. If you have the whale bait, you have the volume, but you don't have the skill, well, you're not going to book calls anyway. So you need all the three aspects to be in play. Whale bait, volume, and skill. And if you're not booking calls, then check your content out. Let's get into the details of like pricing and what do you find one and all that good stuff. So what do we pay people? First month we pay 30 bucks per call and 150 bucks per close. And we actually tell them, hey, we're testing it. And uh, if it works, then we go into the second month, which is 1K salary, 30 bucks per call, 150 bucks per close. I didn't include this here. I forgot. But do we give them our password? I just give them. Honestly, I, I do because like, yeah, what if they, you know, ruin your account? It's like, why would they want to ruin the account? I don't know. I just do believe that people are like good deep within. So I don't mind giving them a password. Daily tasks. What do they do? I like to keep a folder for yourself, a folder where you keep track of all the conversations that actually book the call. That helps because that way you have an archive and you can see like what are the pain points that you can target. And it also helps if you ever want to hire a setter in the future, you can just give them that. And EOD report that stands for end of day. So number of DMs sent 30 plus number of links sent three number of calls booked one. By the way, these are really good numbers. Like if you're sending 30 DMs and you're booking one call, pretty good and upload it to folder yes or no you just want to make sure that it, you know you hold them accountable and the folder keeps becoming that sales asset you can use for yourself and for anybody whoever's ever in your team where can you find one you can ask if you have friends network audience like hey i'm looking for a setter right does anybody know one this also helps the trust aspect because if a friend refers them to you then it's easier to trust them two is hireua.com this is ukrainian talent my business partner ryan and me we've hired a bunch of people from there so really really good service you can go to you can go over there recommend it daily tasks when it comes to you what do you do okay and i really like this quote by alex ramosi do not automate what should be systematized this is not a setter and forget it like you're gonna hire a setter and you're gonna have the temptation like i did but you're gonna have the temptation of be like okay well that part of the business it's solved go right doesn't work that way you need to keep helping people every day send them a loom video with leads feedback as in oh this guy isn't that much of a qualified lead why what did you dm him or like what did you not dm this guy and also conversations feedback as in why did you do that what do you do here and remember like we're not the best at this right nobody is the best at this so don't, don't be too hard on on the person this is a process like you're gonna keep getting better at it and they're probably gonna quit on you if you're too harsh on them now i'm gonna leave you with this calls remember equals well bait times volume times skill if you're not getting enough calls then it's probably one of these three issues i love the graphic below by jack butcher it'll feel like nothing's going on but then it just went hopefully that was helpful and um go make some money